All right, for this, I'm on worksheet 7.5, form G. And I'm going to do, in this video, I'm going to do numbers 13 and 14. Um, if we take a look at number 13 first, um, there's four different ways to set up your proportion. Um, it doesn't matter which option you choose as long as, of course, you're consistent. So in this case, if you want to work from top to bottom, so if I want to compare 16 is to X as 12 is to 9, okay, um, that allows me then to just simply cross multiply and divide. So when I multiply my 9 times 16, I get 144, and then I get 12X on the other side. And then the last step is to divide both sides by 12 to get your answer for x of 12. Okay, so again, um, your setup, <clears throat> if you wanted to work, um, 16 is to x, 12 is to 9. Another choice you could have for your setup is you could compare the bottom parts to the top, or you could work from left to right, or you could work from right to left. So again, as long as you're consistent, those are the four different ways you could set this up. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at number 14. Um, again, <clears throat> to show you the different ways to set up, I'm going to, you know, compare different parts in this triangle. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to compare kind of the top left here, kind of work from left to right. So I'm going to compare three, compares x plus two as x compares to x plus 4. Okay, and I'm going to go to another page so I have more room to do this work. So our setup was 3 compares to x plus 2 as x compares to x plus 4. Now the first thing you should do whenever you have binomials in your proportion, you want to put your parentheses around them. Okay, so in this case, um, well, what that does is that allows me to, to remind myself, rather, that when I cross multiply, I'm going to have to distribute. So when I multiply 3 times x plus 4, and then I also multiply x times x plus 2. Alright, so if I distribute this through, that will give me 3x plus 12 distribute your x through, you get x squared plus 2x. <clears throat> now, I know that in this case I have to factor because I have an x squared in my, um, in my equation. So what I want to do is I want to get all of my terms on one side of the equation. And I'm always going to make a decision based on my x squared always staying positive or making it positive so that I can do that. So in this case, I'm going to leave the x squared on the right because if I move it to the other side, it would become negative and that just makes it more difficult to factor and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to subtract my 3x from that 2x and I'm going to minus 12 and there's really kind of a plus 0 over here. So if I minus my 12, I'm going to subtract it really from 0. So everything on the left hand side becomes 0. I have x squared minus 1x minus 12. So this is an Algebra 1 question. At this point, um, we want to do our AC grouping. Our A term is 1. Our C term is 12. So I want to multiply 1 times 12 and list all the factors of 12. So 1, 12, 2, 6, 3, and 4, okay? And I need to pick the factors that when I add them together, they give me this middle term of negative 1. And you have the liberty to make any number uh, positive or negative to make that work. And in this case, obviously, 3 and 4 are going to be your pairs. The 4 has to be your negative, and the 3 has to be your positive. That way, when you combine them, you get negative 1. So that gives you x squared. So let me back up a minute. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this trinomial. I'm going to expand it. I'm going to replace negative 1x in place with negative 4x and 3x. Okay, so I'm just going to expand this into four terms so that I can then group them here in the next step. So x squared minus 4x plus 3x minus 12. Now, whenever you have two terms, in this case where one's positive and one's negative, 
it's easier if you put the negative term first because when you go to factor some terms out, you want to make sure that you you want to you don't want to worry about having to remember to factor out the negative. Okay, so it's just easier if one term's negative, one term's positive, put the negative term first and the positive term second. So if we go to um, group these, we put the first two terms in parentheses, and we put the last two terms in parentheses. So I'm going to look for the greatest common factor here in this first set of parentheses, and that GCF is x. So remember, factoring is the F word for division, so if I divide every term in here by x, x squared divided by x is x. Negative 4x divided by x is a negative 4. Now let's take a look at our second set of parentheses. The GCF here is a 3. So if I divide everything by 3 here, 3x divided by 3 is x. Negative 12 divided by 3 is a minus 4. Um, I need to make sure that the stuff in my parentheses match. They need to be the exact same, and in this case they are, so that's good news. If they were different, that would indicate, of course, you've made a mistake. <clears throat> so if I factor out the x minus 4 from both, or factor it out, they cancel. I'm left with an x and a positive 3. Now, that equals 0 was there the whole time, and I kind of ignored it until the last step. Okay, so now I need to say x minus 4 is equal to 0, and x plus 3 is equal to 0. I'm going to solve each one of these for x. Add 4 to both sides. x is 4, minus 3 from both sides. x is a minus 3. Now, the answer key only has an answer of 4, not negative 3, even though our um, factor solution gave us 4 and negative 3. Well, the reason that is is if I plug 4 into some of these expressions, I get all positive values, which is all possible because these are all representing sides of a triangle. If I took that negative 3 and I plug negative 3 in for x, we'd be okay here. We would not be okay here. That would give me negative 1, and I would not be okay here because that would tell me that this length is negative 3. That's not possible. So negative 3 is not a solution to this. Only 4 is. So if you have any questions on any of these, just email me, SnyderE, um, at nhsd.net.